Okay, um, today I want to demonstrate the series of Foster and Freeman forensic light sources that we have here at London South Bank University. Um, we have several different light sources. We have an oblique light source, which I'm going to show you, which is used for white light searching for things like footwear. We've previously looked at that in one of the other clips we've taken. Um, and also the coloured set of light sources that we use for fluorescence examination to find different types of forensic evidence. So first of all, we'll look at the oblique light source, the ATL, which is this light source here. And to connect it for a search, we need to put the power lead into the centre of the back. So this is plugged into mains. We can also operate it from a battery. Um, and just to, to activate it, just pressing the switch on the top of the light source, and we should see a nice low level light, which will pick up things like dust on the floor. But the main focus of this talk is really the, the coloured light sources that we use for different types of fluorescence examination. And we have a range here. We have a range that go from ultraviolet through violet, blue, blue-green, green and amber. And all of these different colours of light, these different wavelength ranges, will find different forms of forensic evidence. For example, if we're looking for biological evidence, Often the blue light source can be a particularly effective way of finding things like semen. The ultraviolet will find things like urine. For latent fingerprints, the green light source can often give us better results, and sometimes the amber one will think, find things like fibres. It's worth trying the different light sources and seeing which will find different types of evidence at a crime scene. But the important thing about these light sources is they need to be used safely and effectively, and that's where the goggles that come with them come in. And we need to do two things. We need to protect our eyes against the high intensity light that these, out, these light sources are outputting. Um, because if we didn't have the goggles in front of our eyes, we'd be seeing the, the light and that could blind us. Um, the other thing is we need to block out the reflected light and just see the fluorescence. So the filters, the goggles that we're using have that dual purpose. And with this particular range of light sources, it's really quite easy to select the right pair of goggles to go with the light source. So if I pick up the violet light source here, we have a wavelength range. It tells me that that's 395 to 425 nanometers. It's also telling me information about the goggles I want to use, which is GG455. It's got a violet code on the side of the light source. And if I pick up the goggles, we can actually see that it's also got a violet code on the side of the goggles. And it's also telling me that these are GG455 glass in the goggles. So that's compatible with the light source. If I look at another one, if I pick up the, uh, the blue-green light source, again, we have a blue-green color code. It tells me on the side there that that's 455 to 510 nanometers, and I should be using OG550 goggles. And there you go, blue-green goggles, OG550 um, recorded on them. So it's really quite simple, if you look at the color coding, to select the appropriate goggles the light source you're using. The other thing to take into account is if we want to do photography of the evidence we find, we also want to make sure that the camera sees what our eye sees. So we need to be putting an appropriate filter in front of the camera before we take the photograph. And again, we have a set of filters which have a very similar, well, not similar, exactly the same um, designation. So we have violet, we have the GG455 filter glass, and that will be used when we're examining things with the violet light source. And all we would do is just put that in front of the camera lens when we're taking photographs. I'm just gonna do one quick demonstration using the ultraviolet light source because that will give me some easily visible fluorescence and security features in both my driving license and the 10 euro note. So I'm just gonna take my glasses off and put the ultraviolet blocking glasses on in the ultraviolet light source and here's a couple of items I want to examine and we can see that we have some quite bright fluorescence from the security features in the back of the driving license and also some of the things on the 10 euro note and we can see there are slightly different things on the other side. So that's a very quick practical demonstration of how the light sources work. All of them will find different types of forensic evidence as I discussed earlier. Um, but that's all I wanted to show you for today. So thanks for listening and I hope this is useful for you in your project work.